Welcome to a new episode of Eclectish, the podcast. Um, today we will talk a little bit about a mysterious and very much clairvoyant woman whom I've been very interested in lately. I'm gonna say it. <laughs> I hope you enjoy this episode to its fullest. So, yeah, sit back, relax, and enjoy this syntax. <laughs> Um, now, we're going to be talking about Madame Lenormand, and so we're going to first get into her background, right? Well, who the hell is Miss Lenormand over here, and why does she have such a fancy name? Well, for one, because she's French, and as we all know, everything sounds better in French, that's just a fact. And secondly, we need to go over her background a little bit to get a gist of why she became the wondrous psychic she was in her time. We're going to have to take it all the way back to the 18th century, uh, the Napoleonic era, right? Marianne Adelaide Lenormand was born on a wonderful Wednesday, 27th of May, 1772. So yes, she was a Gemini, no need to search it. Um, I kind of already did that for you, so you're welcome. Also, yes, she would have been around 248 years old, which is hella old. <laughs> Anyways, back to the origin. She was born in Alencon, or Alençon, I don't know how to say it, so I just butchered it, which is a commune in Normandy, um, France, right? Into the family of Jean-Louis Antoine Lenormand and Marianne Lenormand, along with her brother and sister. Sadly, her dear mother passed away when she was only five, leaving her and her siblings obviously orphaned and under the care of their father. Meanwhile, she studied in a convent school, Life moved on until her father remarried a young woman whom became her and her siblings' stepmother. Now, as if that wasn't a difficult situation already to handle at such a young age, sadly death struck her family a second time, not long after with her dear father's death. This led to the stepmother now in charge of three children, right? So she obviously made the bright decision to remarry and after accommodating to this new regime, I guess you could call it, Marianne Lenormand at the age of 14 um, persuaded her stepmother to let her go seek her fortune to Paris, right? She would arrive at her stepfather's bookshop. Here she worked for some time and meanwhile used her time to learn more about the following subjects, such as chiromancy, divination, hermetic science, sonambulism, magnetism, astrology, amongst many others. She ended up working there as a bookseller and a secretary while simultaneously writing her fair share of books herself, becoming a very well-known author in Paris. She wrote around 15 in total, so yes, she was extremely talented. Now here's where it gets quite interesting. After a while of working here, she also started reading or telling people's fortunes, right? And became quite well-known and you could call it famous around Paris. So well known, in fact, that apparently many elite, I guess you could say, like the celebrities of that time, went to her for predictions. Especially, I guess you could say, men in the army, because I think what they wanted was to use her mainly to predict the future and be able to change certain winds of battles. As if you can do that, but anyways, whatever. Um, one of the most famous predictions she made was um, for Madame de Bernays, I think that's her name, <laughs> later known as Empress Josephine, which is what I'm going to refer to her as because um, I suck at French, didn't even finish French. Oh, that's embarrassing. Anyway, <laughs> who was the wife of French aristocrat G uh, Jean Francois. Le Norman had predicted Jean Francois's death and later the predictions did come to life. Jean-Francois, whom had been accused of failing to defend the town of Mainz, was arrested and later guillotined under the reign of terror in 1794 that struck France. However, Le Norman had also predicted was being imprisoned along with um, Empress Josephine. She predicted to her that she would recover from her husband's death, she would heal and then meet a soldier whom she would marry soon after, following him to the rise to the top, right? This did occur, which is wild. <laughs> um, Empress Josephine later met, fell in love and married with none other than Napoleon himself, leading her to become Empress of the French, obviously. I guess here's where it gets a little like wacky because after such a traumatic experience, 
and having not only that, but your new marriage predicted, it is safe to say that the Empress had become a, just a little bit obsessed with fortune tellers and card readers, the future in general, right? This led her to refusing the Emperor's or her husband's rules and disobeying court orders, hiding and sneaking in fortune tellers amongst other very strange characters from or outside the kingdom, right? Even going as far to making the emperor extremely jealous at one point of a well-known German fortune teller going by the name of Mr. Hermann, whom it's safe to say must have been quite handsome to make the emperor jealous like that, which eventually led to even more marital conflict along with instability of the kingdom. And her need to know the future kind of fueled her tragedy, right? Many, but like many fortune tellers had also prophesied her divorce from her second husband. Since you've seen the future here and met so many people are saying the same thing, like you would try and avoid it, right? But I guess destiny just can't be avoided. <laughs> um, of course, after all these predictions and elite or celebrity recognition, I guess you could say, Lenormand was in for the bag, I tell you. Practically, she had no competition in her field. She only competed with herself, which we stand. <laughs> Later on, she went to jail several times throughout her career, though. Get out, and then she would go back in, and then she would get out, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? Because technically, her career was non existent, quote unquote, or was the devil's work. You know, old people, whatever, they always got some something to say. <laughs> um, so they did put her in jail several times. And then she would always like retaliate, saying, But my predictions came true. So, so they had to let her go countless times. I lost count at this point. <laughs> when she would get out, she would increase her fortune ever so often until naturally she decided to retire to her original birthplace, which was Alacorn. So yeah, she comfortably retired into a mansion worth around 500,000 francs, which was <laughs> a lot <laughs> in those times, right? Now, I just know some people are going to ask or be curious about more of like her personal life because we've just been talking about her career, which was amazing to say the least. Well, did she have like a significant other of some sort? And I'm kind of disappointed to say not really. Um, many people have said that she was really just not interested in marriage whatsoever. She didn't think about it and refused to partake in it. She didn't even speak about it most of the time, which is amazing i do kind of relate on that <laughs> um i was low-key thinking or i guess you could say wishing she was kind of gay but anyways once you see a picture of her or a painting of her you're gonna understand exactly what i'm saying <laughs> so yes however she did manage to bring up her sister's children after she died early on in their childhood Lenormand died at the ripe age of 71 sadly not completing one of her last predictions uh, which was the age of her death, which she had said would be when she was around 124 years old. Obviously, that prophecy didn't really pan out, <laughs> but it's safe to say she at least she, she had a long run. <laughs> Let's just say that, right? Um, because of her fantastically intriguing career, persona, and private life, only a couple of years later, uh, the deck of oracle cards called Lenormand came out as a tribute to her and her skills, her talents, her clairvoyance, her fortune telling, her healing that she did for so many people. They became quite well known. I, I've noticed that a lot of tarot readers, those cards are super, super helpful when it comes to doing more in-depth readings. Or, so yes, they, they are very well known, especially in Germany, right? Um, for the people that don't understand that, um, oracle cards or tarot cards, um, or a tool for divination, right? And readings of all sorts. I'm going to do an episode on that later. And there you go. That's kind of a brief summary of Madame Marianne Adelaide Lenormand. She was an intriguing and very mysterious woman, to say the least. I hope you enjoyed me talking a little bit about her, and I hope you tune in to the next episode. Also, if you have any like suggestions or historical people that you may want to know more about, well, don't hesitate to comment. Um, um, whatever it is that you want to learn, whether it's esoteric stuff, just know that this is exactly the place you need to be at. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you guys can catch up for the next episode. And yes, good luck, blessings, and goodbye.